I guess we're talking about frogs. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is a frog I think. And today we're going to be discussing, well, basically how radiation affects human body when traveling across space. Wait, that's not entirely what we're talking about. Although that is the point we're going to be making at the end. We are actually talking about some really incredible research coming out of Chernobyl in Ukraine that focused on frogs that you see right here. And specifically on the discovery of black frogs which have now surprisingly become a predominant species in a lot of different ponds and a lot of different bodies of water around certain locations in Chernobyl, where hopefully you know what happened so I don't have to explain. In case you forgot, horrible accident, a lot of radiation released, the entire area became what's known as an exclusion zone, and in the process turned this area into one of the largest nature reserves in Europe, presenting so many opportunities for different animal life to thrive here, and to actually live without any interference from humans. But obviously, there were some questions that scientists wanted to have answered. How exactly did the radiation affect various animals? And what can we learn about the effects of ionizing radiation on, obviously, humans from the effects we observe in these animals? Now, obviously, we know that from the initial reports from uh, Chernobyl, quite a lot of earlier fatalities were all the result of extreme exposure to certain locations that were very high in ionizing energy. But despite all of this, we actually still have a very poor understanding of what exact effects any of this has on the human body, and more importantly, what effects this would have on the human body if traveling across space, if, for example, living on objects like Mars, or any future potential space stations orbiting, for example, around the moon. But I guess more importantly, we don't even understand why in certain locations here on the planet, on planet Earth, such as the location we've discussed in one of the previous videos, the place in Iran known as Ramsar, despite extremely high radiation in comparison to a lot of other regions on the planet, people don't seem to develop more radiation-related problems or conditions. For example, in Ramsar, the overall background radiation is at least 80 times higher than it is in most regions on the planet. In certain places, it's even higher than that, up to about 200 times higher. Not that far off from what you would experience while living on the International Space Station. According to recent calculations, the astronaut living on the ISS experiences less radiation than an average person living in Ramsar. And more intriguingly, a lot of recent NASA studies on the effects of ionizing radiation on astronauts kind of suggested that nothing really happened to any of the US or Russian astronauts even after living up to a year in outer space, at least in terms of the actual radiation exposure. They did have major health changes because of the lack of gravity, because of the zero-g conditions. We've discussed many of these on the channel before, there's actually a bunch of these videos in the description, but in terms of radiation effects, or any kind of damage to any tissue that's often associated with ionizing radiation, there has been no link discovered in over 300 astronauts from the US or over 100 Russian and Soviet cosmonauts. Which brings us back to these little guys. Now as a spoiler, we don't have the answer yet, but they might help us figure out what's happening here. And more importantly, might help us figure out how to protect astronauts on some of the future missions as well. So the original work on Chernobyl began back in 2016 when the scientists studying various frogs living here discovered unusual black-tinted specimen of a typical eastern tree frog that's usually green like you see on the right. Now the black specimen of this species do exist, but they're just super super rare. These ones here are pretty much everywhere in Europe and are extremely common. Yet in Chernobyl, it was almost the opposite. The green ones were kind of rare, but the black ones were kind of very common. Although naturally there were some specimen in between as well, some were darker than others but the black ones were dominating the entire ecosystem. Now, something intriguing was going on here, but in short, the answer was melanin, the pigment that turns skin darker. And the pigment that we know for a fact has evolved to protect our skin and to protect our body from the dangerous effects of UV radiation, with some types of melanin being actually able to disperse approximately 99.9% .9 of all UV radiation offering natural protection to people living in certain regions with a lot of sun, but also creating conditions like albinism where melanocytes are unable to produce melanin. And a few years ago, we actually talked about a discovery from Chernobyl of an unusual black fungus that was growing very close to some of the most dangerous areas where radiation was still really high. The blackness of this fungus was also caused by melanin, which suggested something really important. It wasn't just protecting these organisms from the solar radiation or from the UV light, it was also protecting these organisms 
from a lot of much more dangerous ionizing radiation, including X-rays and potentially gamma rays. Suggesting to the scientists that this is probably exactly what happened to these frogs as well. In this case, they examined 200 male frogs from 12 different ponds, located in various regions of Chernobyl, but also different levels of radioactive contamination, and also several sites outside of the exclusion zone as well, where the radiation levels were used as a control. Revealing that the tree frogs living in Chernobyl, especially the areas that were very contaminated, were usually entirely pitch black. But more intriguingly, none of this was related to the current levels of radiation, and none of these frogs were radioactive either. Which was actually an important discovery. It suggested something else. It suggested that this was a result of your typical evolution, natural selection. And actually, rapid evolution. Something that changed these frogs pretty quickly within just a few decades. With all of this starting back in 1986, right after the disaster, which most likely killed off all of the other frogs, but surprisingly it gave the black frogs, which were pretty rare, an interesting advantage in being able to disperse some of this radiation and thus allowing to thrive in conditions where other frogs could not live. And since 1986, 10 generations of frogs have existed, allowing this particular species, the black species, to become the dominant type in the area around the exclusion zone. And that's because melanin seems to be really good at dispersing various types of high types of energy, ionizing energy, and even neutralizes various ionized molecules inside the cells of the body. It's actually also good at removing reactive oxygen species, with oxidation in this case very often causing damage to, for example, DNA. Which basically gave the black frogs a tremendous advantage in survival, eventually allowing them to take over pretty much the entire habitat. Although obviously the green frogs still exist there today, they're just not as common. But it also represents an extremely important finding in terms of the idea of species surviving and adapting to very high radiation in dangerous regions like Chernobyl. Something that some of the future research is hoping to extend to other species, especially mammals like bears, wolves, and various types of cats. And a few months ago we've also discussed at least one study on the International Space Station that's actually trying to introduce the idea of some kind of a melanin cream that can be applied to an astronaut's skin that can actually protect them from further damage from radiation. The results for the study are not out yet, but the results from this study definitely indicate that there is quite a lot of promising applications for the potential use of synthetic melanin to basically protect yourself from extremely dangerous radiation. So definitely a lot of potential there. However, it doesn't really solve one major mystery that I kind of started the video with. It doesn't really explain to us why none of the astronauts or no one living in that Iranian city experienced any major problems from the much higher levels of radiation that they lived with for many months and many years. It really kind of suggests that we still don't understand how exactly radiation acts on the body or how the body adapts to constant radiation and what happens to the human body when the conditions become radioactive for a much longer period of time. Now I guess maybe one solution to this is just the types of pollution experienced. For these frogs experiencing the radiation in 1986, it would be actually in very high density chunks of extremely highly radioactive material that might only make certain areas radioactive, but other areas would be relatively unaffected. And so by being present in a highly radioactive area, some of these frogs might be exposed to extremely high radiation. Something that could be deadly after just a few minutes. But for an astronaut in space, the radiation is more or less constant. It never changes, that much at least, and for the most part, it's something that our body seems to be able to adapt to. Several studies before have actually established that there is a bit of a change in human blood and even human DNA when exposed to certain types of radiation for a long period of time. So maybe it's just a case of a prolonged exposure to constant radiation versus short exposure to extremely high radiation that seems to make the difference here. But at this point, I'm just kind of guessing here. We really don't know. There's really no clear understanding why none of the astronauts or cosmonauts developed any radiation sickness or radiation-related problems even after being exposed to quite high dosages after living in space for, for example, one year. Now maybe the answer is because the sample size is pretty small, we're talking about just over 400 people, but then there's also the question of Ramsar, Iran. Here people live for decades and no one seems to have experienced any major increase in any radiation related problems. So definitely something we don't understand and something that's super important for us to understand if one day we want to establish something on the moon or if we're going to have some kind of a colony on Mars. 
Intriguingly, the biggest problems the astronauts experienced so far is really related to the lack of gravity to the ZOG conditions. The videos about this are all in the description below. But these case studies from Chernobyl, especially future ones using mammals, are going to be exceptionally important in helping us tackle this unusual mystery. Is melanin really that good at protecting us from ionizing radiation, including gamma rays? And is it possible that the levels of radiation on Mars that we've detected so far might not be actually as dangerous as we initially thought? Maybe it's going to be possible for, for example, for NASA to extend these missions way past the initial date of just three years. So there are definitely some interesting discoveries to be made here, but no official conclusion yet. Just some speculations and a lot of black frogs. Although in this case, the fact that melanin protected the frogs is almost certain. But because this is ongoing research and none of this has a conclusion yet, we'll be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos as well. On that frog, I mean on that note, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description, and stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.